Creating a user interface skin can be as fun, fast, or detailed as you want. This guide will show you how to use Skin Composer specifically for creating a user interface skin to be used with LibGDX Scene 2D UI. You will need to have some familiarity with LibGDX and Scene 2D to follow along. Skin Composer is a Java program powered by the LibGDX framework. To run the application, ensure that you have the latest version of Java installed. Download the zip file for Skin Composer to your computer and extract the contents. Links are in the description. Run the app by double clicking the executable in Windows, executing the Java command in Linux, or installing the app package on Mac. The best way to explore Skin Composer is to import an existing skin. Click File Import. You will be prompted to save the project first. Once you have done that, navigate to the samples folder included with the download. Select plainjamesui.json. After taking a moment to load, a preview of a button will appear on the right side. The panel on the left side displays all of the current style's properties for the selected class. Click on the portrait next to the Up property. This will bring up the Drawables dialog. Here you can select a new image to replace the upstate of the button. You can also choose Clear Drawable to clear the selection. The preview is updated to reflect the change. Try this with the other drawable properties and click the interactive button in the preview to see how it changes. There are different kinds of properties you can set depending on which class you're modifying. These include fonts, colors, numeric values, and links to other class styles. Clicking these corresponding controls will behave in a predictable manner. Skins operate on the idea of having different styles. You may have a standard button for your menus, but you might want a more stylish button to begin the game. Click the plus button to the right of the style select box at the top. You will be prompted to name the style. Invalid names will not be accepted. Letters, numbers, dashes, and underscores are fine. A new style with empty properties will be created. Try making a button with a different appearance here. You can switch between the different styles by clicking the style select box. Each class has a required default style that can't be deleted. If you want to delete any of the other styles, select the style and click the X button. Sometimes you already have a good widget and you want to make another style just like it with only minor changes. Select the default style and click the duplicate button. After entering a new name you can make changes to the style without affecting the original. Each different class represents a widget that you can use in your user interfaces. If you have no use for a certain kind of widget you are not obligated to include it in your skin. By leaving all the fields blank and not adding any styles, it will not be included in your export. Some classes, such as the select box, depend on other classes in order to operate. You must create these dependencies first. There are also mandatory fields that must be filled as dictated by libgdx. Any classes missing these mandatory fields will not be previewed or exported. Try choosing the select box class from the class select box at the top. Notice the maroon colored fields, which are mandatory, and the orange colored fields, which are optional. Drawables, or simply images in our case, are the main components to our skins. The drawables dialog can be opened by clicking on a drawable property in a style, or by going through the menu project drawables. Adding images to your project is very easy. Click the add drawable button to select one or more images at a time.
You can also just drag and drop files from your operating system to the window if you prefer. Images of all the standard file types as well as nine patches are supported by libgdx. Thumbnails are displayed for each drawable. The background is colored white or black to give the best contrast with the edges of the images. By default, the drawables are displayed at their smallest natural size. Changing the value of the zoom slider will expand the drawables while honoring any 9-patch settings. Sometimes you have a lot of drawables and you need to find a specific one you just added. Changing the sort by select box value will allow you to sort alphabetically or by file modified date. You can delete any unneeded drawables by clicking the X button above the thumbnail. This will also unbind any style properties that use that particular image. You can also create tinted drawables by clicking the color wheel above the thumbnail. This creates a duplicate drawable tinted with a specified color. Try making a red button with a round white drawable. Tinting works best with images that have a white fill. Setting colors makes it easy to maintain a consistent theme across your entire skin. With the plain James UI.json sample, you can see a number of colors used throughout the different style properties. To open the colors dialog, click a style property for a color or go through project colors. Click the New Color button to add a new color. From the color picker you can select a hue from the slider and select brightness saturation on the color graph. An alpha value can be selected from the slider on the right. For more precise control, use the number spinners to change any of these values. You will be prompted to add a name. Letters, numbers, dashes, and underscores are accepted. Scene2D UI uses bitmap fonts to display text. Bitmap fonts include a texture image and a text file to describe how the characters are spliced. Skin Composer can include these fonts in the skin file to display labels, text on buttons, etc. Once you have one prepared, access the fonts dialog by clicking on a font property or going through project fonts. Add a new font by clicking the new font button or by dragging FNT files from your operating system to the window. One or more fonts can be selected at a time. You will be prompted to enter a name for each font added. Letters, numbers, dashes, and underscores are accepted. Previews of the fonts are visible. You can sort the fonts alphabetically or by modified date. Press the X button on any font you want to remove. Doing so will unbind any properties linked to the font. Having a variety of fonts at your disposal can add emphasis to wherever you need it in your app. A caveat to developing skins are the restrictions of working with texture images. Skin Composer uses Texture Packer to pack images in an efficient manner to save memory space and file size. Most of the settings for this are already set to common values. You may want to change the maximum width and height to reflect maximum supported by your target devices. This and a few other settings are available in the settings dialog. Go to Project Settings to bring this up. Here you will also find a setting for the maximum number of undos to keep in memory, as well as links to system folders for troubleshooting. Click the Repack Texture Atlas button if you have made a change to a link drawable and you want it to be reflected in the preview. You can change the preview properties to get a better idea of how your skin is going to look in different situations. Sometimes you'll design widgets for a dark background. They'll understandably look awful on the default white background. 
This and every configurable option I could think of are in the Preview Properties panel. As you change classes, the Preview Properties are updated. Make sure to resize the panels if you want a better look at them. The size options allow you to emulate the different ways you can place a widget in a table. It's helpful to resize the preview panel and the window to see if it passes all the size tests. Saving the project is necessary if you want to return to make changes later. Do this through File Save As. The file will be saved as an SCMP file. This file cannot be imported into your libgdx app, however. To use this skin in a libgdx game or program, go to File Export. This option creates a skin JSON file, a texture atlas PNG, a texture atlas text file, and copies over any bitmap font FNT files that you're using. All these files must be copied to your libgdx projects assets folder to work. See the libgdx wiki for more details. That's all I have for Skin Composer. Stay tuned for more skins, games, and utilities in the future. Please put your questions or bug reports in the comments section. Source code and download links are in the description. Thanks!